Hello friends and welcome. Today I am going to deliver a lecture on food engineering. This lecture deals with basics and fundamental themes involved in food engineering subject and will be discussed under the following subheadings. First will be the definition of food engineering. Next will be the key areas of study in food engineering subject and the requirements for food processing. Next will be the operations and goals in food processing. Then we will be discussing engineering properties of food, biological and packaging material. Next will be the microbiological considerations in food engineering. And finally the safety, quality and need of distinct discipline for food engineering. Now we will start with the definition of food engineering. Food engineering deals with the understanding of dynamic physico-chemical phenomena that occur during food processing, packaging and storage for the purpose of designing and operating processes that deliver safe, nutritious and marketable foods. The components of this core competency include several engineering topics such as engineering principles including mass and energy balances, thermodynamics, fluid flow and heat and mass transfer. Number second, the principles of food preservation including low and high temperature processes, water activity. Number third, the principles of food processing techniques such as drying, high pressure, aseptic processing and extrusion. Number fourth, packaging materials and methods. And number fifth, cleaning and sanitation. India is essentially an agricultural country and the economy is basically agrarian in nature. More than 70% of the population lives in rural areas and out of them 80% depend on agriculture for employment and livelihood. For an agrarian economy, rural population can be considerably benefited by food technology at least in the three ways. Number first, instant foods that is energy foods and baby foods can be produced from the locally available raw materials which will reduce child malnutrition. Number second, integrated food management for storage, transportation and distribution. And number third, application of food technology practices for processing traditional foods by way of drying, pickling, salting and smoking. The food grains production has increased from a meager 50 million tons in the year 1947 to a staggering 229 million tons today. India stands almost third in the world in food production with about 601 million tons today, which is almost comparable to that of US. The progress in the agricultural production was facilitated by government's Green Revolution program and Save Green campaign during 1960s. Now let us discuss the key areas to be studied under food engineering. The major subjects which deal with food engineering which a food technologist needs to understand for the successful processing of food are Number first, rheological properties of foods. Number second, reaction kinetics in food systems. Number third, phase transitions and transformations in food systems. Number fourth, transport and storage of food products. Number fifth, heating and cooling processes for foods. Number sixth, food freezing. Number seventh, mass transfer in foods. Number eighth, evaporation and freeze concentration. Number ninth, membrane concentration of liquid foods. Number tenth, food dehydration. Number eleventh, thermal processing of canned foods. Number twelfth, extrusion processes. Number thirteenth, food packaging. And number fourteenth, cleaning and sanitation. Now let us discuss the requirements for food processing. The importance of food processing begins once the agricultural produce is harvested. As the crop production is seasonal, the derived food products should be made available throughout the year. The food should be preserved and made available during famine, floods and other natural calamities and emergency situations. Some of the salient features of food processing are as Number first, scientific and technological approaches for improving food quality and availability irrespective of season and geography. Number second, prevention of post-harvest losses as they dent the economics. 
Number third, socio-economic condition of the farmer will be improved if encouraging prices are quoted for the produce. Number fourth, food processing workers in tandem with other allied sectors such as transport and hence generates employment and wealth. Number fifth, to improve varieties and the taste of food. Now let us try to learn about the operations in food processing. Most food processes utilize six different unit operations that is heat transfer, fluid flow, mass transfer, mixing, size adjustment and separation. During food processing, food materials may be combined with a variety of ingredients to formulate the product and then subjected to different unit operations either sequentially or simultaneously. Food processors often use process flow charts to visualize the sequence of operations needed to transform raw materials into final processed product. Number first is broad unit operations in which number first is heat transfer. Heat transfer is one of the fundamental processing principles applied in the food industry and its applications in various unit operations, thermal processing, evaporation and drying, freezing and thawing, baking and cooking. Heating is used to destroy microorganisms to provide a healthy food, prolong shelf life through the destruction of certain enzymes and promote a product with acceptable taste, odor and appearance. Heat transfer is governed by heat exchange between a product and its surrounding medium. The extent of heat transfer generally increases with increasing temperature difference between the product and its surrounding. Number second is mass transfer. Mass transfer involves migration of a constituent of fluid or a component of a mixture in or out of a food product. Mass transfer is controlled by the diffusion of the component within the mixture. The mass migration occurs due to changes in physical equilibrium of the system caused by the concentration or vapor pressure differences. The mass transfer may occur within one phase or may involve a transfer from one phase to another. Food process unit operations that utilize mass transfer include distillation, gas absorption, crystallization, membrane processes, evaporation and drying. Number third is fluid flow. Fluid flow involves transporting liquid food through pipes during processing. Powders and small particulate foods are handled by pneumatic conveying, whereas fluids are transported by gravity flow or through the use of pumps. The centrifugal pump and the positive displacement pump are two pumps commonly used for fluid flow. Number fifth is mixing. Mixing is a common unit operation to distribute each ingredient during manufacturing of a food product. Mixing is generally required to achieve uniformity in the raw material or intermediate product before it is taken for final production. Mixing of cookie or bread dough is an example wherein required ingredients need to be mixed well into uniform dough before they are portioned into individual cookies or loaves. Number fifth is size adjustment. In size adjustment, the food is reduced mostly into smaller pieces during processing as the raw material may not be at a desired size. This may involve slicing, dicing, cutting and grinding. However, increasing a product size is also possible. For example, aggregation, agglomeration and gelation are examples of size adjustment that result in increase in size. In the case of liquid foods, size reduction is often achieved by homogenization. During milk processing, fats are broken into emulsions via homogenization. Number sixth is separation. This aspect of food processing involves separation and recovery of targeted food components from a complex mixture of compounds. This may involve separating a solid from a solid, for example, peeling of potatoes or shelling of nuts. Separating a solid from a liquid, for example, filtration, extraction or separating liquid from liquid, for example, evaporation and distillation. Then comes the specific operations in which number first is drying, that is extraction of moisture by sun, air, heat or vacuum to inhibit the growth of molds, bacteria and yeasts. Number second is salting. 
the addition of salt or a brine solution to foods to decrease the activity of molds, bacteria and yeast. Number third is curing. The addition of a chemical compound such as sodium nitrate or sodium nitrite to food to slow the growth of bacteria. Number fourth, fermentation. The use of special bacteria molds or yeasts to prevent spoilage by converting the elements of food that spoil easily to stable elements that act as preservatives. Number fifth is freeze drying. The freezing of food and the subsequent removal of water from the frozen food through the use of vacuum. Number sixth is smoking. The addition of smoke and heat to preserve food by the action of the chemical from smoked wood and the partial drying of the food. Number seventh is caning or aseptic packaging. The packaging of food in a container, sealing the container and heating it to sterilize the food. Number eight is pasteurization. The heating of milk and other liquids which reduces the number of disease producing bacteria. Number ninth is refrigeration, that is the lowering of temperature of food to inhibit the growth of bacteria, molds and yeasts. Number tenth is freezing, that is the lowering of the temperature of food to below minus 20 degrees Celsius to stop the growth of bacteria, yeasts and molds and to kill parasites. Number eleventh, food concentration, that is heating food until it boils and removing the water or partially freezing food and removing water in the form of ice crystals. Number 12th, irradiation. That is, passing energy through food to destroy insects, fungi or bacteria that cause human disease or cause food to spoil. Now, let us try to learn about the goals of food processing. The food industry utilizes a variety of technologies such as thermal processing, dehydration, refrigeration and freezing to preserve food materials. The goals of these food preservation methods include eliminating harmful pathogens present in the food and minimizing or eliminating spoilage microorganisms and enzymes for shelf life extinction. The general concepts associated with processing of foods to achieve shelf life extension and preserve quality include number first addition of heat, number second removal of heat, Number third, removal of moisture. And number fourth, packaging of foods to maintain the desirable aspects established through processing. Many food processing operations add heat energy to achieve elevated temperatures detrimental to the growth of pathogenic microorganisms. Exposure of food to elevated temperature for a predetermined length of time is a key concept in food processing. Pasteurization of milk fruit and vegetable juices, canning of plant and animal food products are some examples of processing with heat addition. The microbial inactivation achiever is based on exposure of food to specific time temperature combinations. Processing of foods by heat removal is aimed more towards achieving shelf life extension by slowing down the biochemical and enzymatic reactions that degrade foods. Removal of moisture is another major processing concept in which preservation is achieved by reducing free moisture in foods to limit or eliminate the growth of spoilage microorganisms. Finally, packaging maintains the product characteristics established by processing of the food including preventing post-processing contamination. Packaging operations are also considered part of food processing. Now, let us discuss the engineering properties of food biological and packaging material. Knowledge of various engineering properties of food, biological and packaging material is critical for successful product development, quality control and optimization of food processing operations. For example, data on density of food material are important for separation, size reduction or mixing processes. Knowledge of thermal properties of food is useful in identifying the extent of process uniformity during thermal processes such as pasteurization and sterilization. For liquid foods, knowledge of rheological characteristics including viscosity helps us in the design of pumping systems for different continuous flow operations. Different food process operations such as heating, cooling and concentration can alter product viscosity during processing 
and this needs to be considered during design. Phase and gloss transient characteristics of food materials govern many food processing operations such as freezing, dehydration, evaporation and distillation. Thus, food scientists and process engineers need to adequately characterize or gather information about relevant thermophysical properties of food materials being processed. Next, let us learn about the microbiological considerations in food engineering. Most raw food materials naturally contain microorganisms which bring both desirable and undesirable effects to processed foods. For example, many fermented foods for example, ripened cheese, pickles, sauerkraut and fermented sausages have considerably extended shelf life, developed aroma and flavor characteristics over those of the raw materials. The microbes involved in such operations mainly are lactobacillus and lactococcus. On the other hand, raw food material also contains pathogens and supilage organisms. Different foods harbor different pathogens and supilage organisms. For example, raw apple juice may be contaminated with E. coli. The target pathogen of concern in shelf-stable low-acid foods such as soups is Clostridium botulinum spores. Different pathogenic and spoilage microorganisms offer varied degrees of resistance to thermal treatment. Accordingly, the design of an adequate process to produce safer products depends in part on the resistance of such microorganisms to lethal agents, food materials and desired shelf life. Now, let's try to learn about the safety and quality in food engineering. Number first is microorganism which deals with safety risk present in each food that is bacteria, viruses and fungi. Finding of foods which are at greater risk for contamination is very important. Number second is pH. Bacteria thrive in a pH neutral environment that is pH 7. Items with pH above 8 tend to be very bitter and toxic and foods with pH below 6 tend to be tart or sour. Other parameters to control qualities are temperature. They are as follows. 5 to 60 degrees Celsius is the temperature danger zone, that is, rapid multiplication of microorganisms. Less than 5 degrees Celsius means very slow growth. Less than minus 2 degrees Celsius means no growth and no death. And greater than 60 degrees Celsius means death of microorganisms. Number four, moisture content and protein content. That is, bacteria need a high moisture content and fungi can grow in lower moisture. Number fifth is food deterioration. That is, enzymes break down proteins over time. Therefore, must deactivate enzymes before food can be stored. Now at last, let us discuss the need of distinct discipline for food engineering. Food engineering is considered a distinct discipline when compared to other engineering discipline. Some of the reasons are Number first, change in characteristic properties of raw materials during processing and hence need to define process parameters along the time scale. Number second, variability in the raw materials affects the properties of materials for processing. Number third, requirement of specialized and customized equipment for food processing. And number fourth, strict maintenance of sterile and hygienic conditions to prevent spoilage of materials. That's all about today's lecture. Hope you have understood it well. Thank you very much and goodbye.